hello guys welcome back to the civil engineering youtube channel please subscribe our channel for more civil engineering updates today our lecture is about the uh, crank bar what are the crank bar and uh, how they are used and why they are used so let's come to the definition of crank bars crank bar are those bar which can resist both the positive moment as well as the negative moments negative moments the positive moments as well as the negative moments so how let's take an example here let's take an example here of this the beam and these are the two columns here let's take the, the upper story first story and maybe the, there are some other beams here and it's going left side as well as on the right side so what when the load acts on this color on these beams it will transfer the loads to the column right to these columns so the it the beam will bend like this way there's a maximum bending moment at the midpoint due to the uniformly distributed load and here it will bend in upper direction if I remove the loading so how it will looks it will bend like this it will bend like this due to load there is positive moment here acting at the center of the beam and there at the supports there is negative moment due to the load condition it will bend like in this way because due to supports here we create the negative moments here we have positive moment at the mid here we have negative moments at both the ends so what so what these crank bars are these crank bars are juice to resist both this positive moment as well as the negative moment like how like if this is a consider this is the same example this is the beam beam columns these are the columns these are the columns and this is a beam so due to this due to this due to this bending moment positive bending moment at the center of the beam we will provide the reinforcement here at the bottom to resist the tensile stresses here at the bottom right positive bending moments we will provide the reinforcement at the bottom of the section and this is the section at the bottom so we will provide the reinforcement at the bottom of the section if this is at the support we have the negative moment so we will provide the reinforcement at the top of the section to resist the negative moments similar case is that one so let's come in here how we place the reinforcement and how the crank bar is used. Now to resist this positive moment, we place the negative moment here in this way. Right? But but somehow we place the reinforcement to provide the negative reinforcement to resist the negative uh, moment, we provide the negative reinforcement in this way. But what we do, we actually want to get rid of this negative reinforcement to provide it separable. We want to not to provide these reinforcement at the negative moment. So what we do, we place the crank bars here. So these are the bars, but actually these are bent bars. Bent bars and they are here. Similarly, these are, these are also bends here in this direction. And now they're here. So the negative moment here creating is the negative moment created here in this direction, in this portion. And as the negative moment creates here in this portion at the supports, now these crank bars are now able to resist the negative moments at the supports while it can resist the positive moment at the midpoint which is the center to the midpoint is the L by 3 for example L by 3 and L by 3 and here L by 4 L by 4 and this is the length L of the beam so the, these crank bars are now able to support the positive moment and we bend these bars up to the and to the negative section why because there is no use to place the reinforcement here in this way in this positive direction because there is no positive moment acting but somehow we place the minimum reinforcement throughout the joint but we don't allow the all of the bars to move inside the joint we bend the bars and move upward into the column and it bends like this way so this we call the development length which is produced inside the column this is called the development length and I will upload the video about the development length how to find the development length 
in the coming lecture right today lecture was about the crank bars so crank bars are used to resist to uh, resist the negative as well as the positive moments now how to find the length of this crank bar how much it bends how much is it bends this is the length of the crank bar so let's come to the how to find how do we find the length the length of this negative or crank bar can be found out by formula that is point four two and two d so I will again draw the picture the diagram and the crank bar Here we have positive reinforcement to resist and it is cranked here, the negative coming here. Similarly, it is in this way, it is bent here and this way. So, how to find this length of the crank bar? This is the length of the crank bar. How to find this length? 0 0.4 into 2 into D. What is D? D is the distance from this crank, the whole length throughout this. This is the D. Removing the clear cover here and removing the clear cover here. And we take the clear cover in case of the slabs 1.5 inches usually. 1.5 inches usually. While in case of the slabs we take 0.75. In case of beams we take 1.5. So this is the D. Removing these two from the D, from the uh, width, the depth of the beam, we get the distant D. And D, in this case, let's take an example that the width, the, the total depth of the beam is, let's suppose, 2 foot. So, how we calculate the D? So, D will be equal to the 2 foot minus this 1.5 and this 1.5, what we get? 3 inches. We get 3 inches. So, 2 foot is equal to the 24 inches minus 3 inches, we get the 21 inches. So 21 inches is the D. So we here we will put the 0.42 into 21. So what we get? We get here, after calculating, 8.8. .8. We almost take 8.8, .8. yes, 8.8 .8 inches. It means that the length of this crank bar is 8.8 .8 inches. If this crank bar is placed at 45 degree, if this crank bar here, here this screwing bar here is placed at 45 degree because this equation is applicable when the crank bars are placed at 45 degree at 45 degree so we can use this equation to find the length of the crank bars so this was all about the crank bars hope you understand and it will really help you if you watch it clearly and understandable and don't forget to subscribe our channel for coming civil engineering videos thank you for watching and share our video